Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate video. And in today's video, I am going to be bringing you part 2 in my Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Trick series. Effectively, small, subtle, sometimes hidden or at least not immediately apparent things that you can do in game that will, more often than not, make your life a little bit easier. In my last video, I ran you through things such as waving at balloons to reveal monsters' locations, crouching to carve faster, and even using items while climbing. There were 5 tips in total, so if you haven't seen that video, then I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below, so you can check it out. But, with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. So, coming in at number 5, Hoogie Rodeo. Okay, so this one is just a bit of fun, won't really benefit you in any way, but hey, it'll put a smile on your face. Poogie is your pig that lives in your house. You may have already seen that you can interact with him in a number of different ways. And aside from Poogie being one of the biggest mysteries in Monster Hunter, where people often believe that petting him and getting a heart gives you good luck, that's not what this is about. See, one of the options will let you pick him up. Doing so then lets you take him outside. If you then interact with him again when he's outside, there's the option to rodeo. Now no, unfortunately you can't ride him, but if you select this option, your palicos will mount him and start riding around in a comical fashion. Cool? Yes. Pointless, seemingly so, worth being in this video? Of course! Next, at number 4, onto something that will actually benefit you. Stop, drop and roll. Okay, you can ignore the stop bit, but yeah, rolling. If you've reached the point in the game where you fought a Brachidius, then you'll know that he can apply a slime debuff to you. It's actually called Blast now, but it used to be called Slime. Either way, if you get hit, or you step in one of the green puddles, you'll notice next to your name you have a little bomb icon. If you do nothing to get rid of this, it will detonate, and it can do some pretty nasty damage. If, however, you roll, three times to be precise, you can shake off the blast and you'll be fine. This also goes for the burning that is applied to you if you are hit by, say, a Rathalos or a Rathian's fireball. While on fire, you lose health, but if you roll, you'll be able to put the fire out. And if there's water or a puddle nearby, roll in it just once, and it will put the fire out for you. Logic! You obviously can't roll to shake everything, but effects like that, it should be your go-to response. Then, coming in at number 3, returning those missing quests. If you've hit the high rank quests, then you've probably hit a point whereby you go to get a quest, usually one of those advanced ones against something like an Elder Dragon like Teostra or Kashala, but it's not in your list. Annoying, right? But you can fix that. See, these quests are special, and they come and go, but the important thing is, you can always get them back. If it's not in your list, simply grab any quest, it doesn't matter which one, go out, then as soon as the quest begins, go to your menu and hit abandon. All you want to do is cancel the quest so it returns you to the gathering hall. Then once you return, speak to the respective quest lady and check the list. If it's still not there, simply go and select another quest, abandon and come back again, and it should be there. Usually it will return in a single recycle, sometimes it does take a couple, and if you're hunting as a group, sometimes one of you will have it while the other will not. Either way, that, my friends, is how you get them to return. Then coming in at number 2, blocking. No, I'm not going to tell you that you can block by holding the R button if you have an applicable weapon, that'd be silly and you know that by now. What I am going to tell you is that you can block roars and flashes. There is an armor skill you can get known as earplugs, which, depending on the grade, will allow you to simply ignore all roars. However, in the event that you don't have them and you have a weapon that can block, i.e. a sword and shield, a charge blade, a lance, etc, Basically, if you have a means to block, you can block monsters' roars. This is not the same as having earplugs. You still get a knockback animation, but it's not quite as long as the animation you get stuck in if you get caught in a roar. If you see the monster is getting ready to roar, simply face it, pull up your shield, and more often than not, if you're positioned correctly, you'll block it. You still, as mentioned, get a bit of a knockback, but it does invariably give you just enough time to close the gap before the monster begins to move which is an opening you wouldn't get if you simply let the monster roar and you put your hands over your ears. This also applies to Gypsaros' Flash, the really annoying one that puts stars above your head. This one can be a bit hit and miss, but for the most part, so long as you're facing him and blocking, you can usually deflect the Flash and come out fine, which means you can either then rush in and attack, or you can go around helping your teammates. Then, coming in at number 1. This is for the Charge Blade and Insect Glaive users out there. Harvesting Dead Monsters. If you've ever been on a quest where you're hunting multiple monsters, then I would imagine, unless you have the most epic synchronization in the world, that you normally kill one of the monsters first. You'll also know, with the Insect Glaive and the Charge Blade, the importance of either having the appropriate jellies to get your coloured buffs, or having Red Shield Charge and full files. If you use the weapon effectively, you'll try and keep these charged at all times. And that is where this tip comes in. When you kill a monster, you'll notice you can still hit it, and your weapon will actually make contact. And what that means is that you can harvest the dead body. 
Sorry, that sounds so grim, but effectively, with a charge blade, you can hit it to fill up your files, then transfer the files into your shield, and fill your files again. And with the insect blade, you can run around and grab your jelly from the respective locations. Red from the head, usually white from the legs, and orange from some sort of body location. Now sure, if you charge up and then have to spend the next minute looking for the monster, it may well wear off, but in the event you know exactly where it is, and it's only an area away, it means that as a charge blade and insect glaive user, you can go into the next battle fully prepared. And that, my friends, is it for part 2 of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Tricks. Hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you found it helpful, and as always if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to become part of the Arax Gaming Nation. Let me know in the comments down below how many of these you did or did not know, and once again, thank you very much for watching, Take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.